Hey YouTube, this is MindTech. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the Remove YouTube Dislikes Chrome and Edge plugin that was developed after YouTube decided to remove the dislike count across the entire website and mobile app. Now I could go into a lot of detail about my opinions about this YouTube change, but today we're only going to be analyzing how this plugin works and specifically the accuracy of the plugin compared to the actual dislike like data that's available to me as a creator. If you look up Return YouTube Dislikes on the Chrome Web Store, you can find a link to the plugin here. It's the one with over a million users and over 10,000 ratings. Make sure you're getting the right one and not some random one that might install malware on your computer. Here's the website that they've actually created for this plugin. You can either install the binaries right from here, or you can go to their GitHub repository, review over the code. They do have documentation for a public API, so you can actually interface and get dislikes based on their data. When they first removed the dislikes on the platform, all they did was hide the dislike count, but those dislikes were still publicly accessible through the API. But in December, they removed that. The creators of this API had to try to estimate the actual amount of dislikes on a video. They do that both through historical data and through collecting the dislikes from users of the plugin to try to extrapolate the amount of dislikes roughly on a video. And also according to the FAQ section on this website, you will be able to opt in as a creator to share your dislikes in the future with the creators of this plugin. Now just to demo the API working very quickly, here's a video on YouTube. As you can see, it just looks like it did before November. Likes, dislikes, you can hover over, see that bar. Sometimes it takes a little bit to load in, but it has been generally reliable. Videos that report the full number of dislikes loading the page, it might say to 250 and then after the page loads it might be 253 or something like that. If I go on to a browser that doesn't have the plugin installed as you can see it just says dislike and it also does not have that bar so the plugin did actually have to do a lot of trickery to add in all those features. It's fluent it doesn't make the page do anything hacky but you know how accurate is it? So I collected some data based on around 40 videos on my channel. I went into the creator dashboard and then I went using Using the plugin and collected the amount of dislikes that it is reporting. I would like to note that all the videos on this list had dislikes reported before the API stopped reporting APIs, so there is a good chance that the data collected here is based on historical data and not actual data from users. But then again, the data reported after the YouTube API stopped working would have to be updated to get the most current count of the dislikes. The big trend, first of all, is that it is a conservative plugin meaning that it estimates fewer dislikes than there actually are. There's only one video though, and that was my most popular one with over 100,000 views that reported more dislikes than there actually were, as you can see 225 versus 204. So as you can see with videos that have over 20 dislikes, the, the percentage error is normally around five to 15%, which I would say is fairly good. And that's going to constitute probably most of the videos that you're gonna be watching. You're gonna have a a video with over a million views more than likely, or at least over 10,000 views. Where it loses accuracy though is when you have a smaller view count. And what I mean by losing accuracy is that the percentage error calculations can really sway a lot. This dollar store fan video that received 379 views and is over 1,500 days old, it estimated that it had three dislikes, whereas it actually had four dislikes. Again, it's being more conservative. Whereas a lot of the time where you see 100% error rate that's because it had one dislike or two dislikes actually whereas it was only reporting at zero dislikes let's say you're watching a really small tutorial you might want to quickly look at the dislikes and it, it might be off just by a bit to where you think that the information is good so that's why you still really have to use at least some level of vigilance it's obviously not going to be completely accurate but then again is the actual YouTube dislike counter really completely accurate there's a lot of other considerations that go 
scroll into dislikes than actually the number of times that button was clicked. Now, if you look at my data, when it's red, it means that it was a more conservative estimate than it actually was. So the only times this wasn't negative was for that video with over 100,000 views and for when the error rate was 0%. And it did actually get a 0% error rate a few times. Here, when it had 11 dislikes, here when it had five dislikes, and a lot of the time when it had zero dislikes. I was kind of predicting that, you know, the older the video, the less currently scraped it was by the algorithm that collected all the data. But what I found is that there's a fairly weak correlation between age and views. What I did find though, is that the number of views and the accuracy has a very strong correlation, especially when the video has over 10,000 views. I noticed that the rate of error was only about 9% for videos over 10,000 views, but it quickly increased once you got under 10,000 views to over 52%. Although there was not a significant correlation for videos with over 10,000 views and the age of the video, a 0.14 R squared value still means that there is some sort of relationship there. So generally, if you have an old video, a lot of views, that count is going to be probably within 5% of the realistic count. Whereas if you have a brand new video under 100 views, you might not wanna be able to trust the dislike count reported by this plugin. But I can only see this getting better. You know, if a lot of creators opt in to share their data with the plugin creators, and if more and more people begin to use this plugin, it's only bound to get more accurate. Now there is one comment that I'd like to address. Let's be honest, people will just adopt the new data over what YouTube is hiding. The real dislike count will become irrelevant. And I can kind of see where this perspective comes into play. Everything is just an estimate on YouTube, so who cares if that estimate varies five to 10% from the actual value? Or I can kind of see that being a problem though, is like I said, with much smaller videos, if that data is really far off from the actual data being represented by YouTube, that can create problems, especially if you're just trying to weed out really bad videos. You know, one thing that the co-founder of YouTube said, talking out against this change to remove the dislikes, is that they were instituted to weed out bad content. Billions upon billions of hours of content are uploaded every single week to YouTube. How are you to know if a small video should be promoted or should just be, you know, dis disliked and disregarded. I just wanted to get the word out about this great plugin. I, th I think it works really well. I would highly recommend it so that we can make the dislikes collected by this plugin even more accurate. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye.